guys and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to show you here how you can create a fake prism effect like in this shot or in this shot or in this photo. The photo we are going to use for today's tutorial is this one and I will show you one technique which is the easiest ones especially if you have never worked with blending modes. If you want me to do a tutorial on blending modes, let me know. Blending modes in general are these here. They are really powerful tools for editing photos. And um, yes, you might want to know how to use them, but for this tutori tutorial, you don't need them. And this is really just going to be a basic version of how to create a prism effect and I'd say let's get started. So first of all what I'm going to do is duplicate this image. Let's rename it to blend1. Next decrease the opacity of it because what we're going to do next is move the photo a little to see where we could position it best next. So let's increase the opacity a bit so that you can see. One general tip is that you try to align specific part, parts of the face so that the photo doesn't look like a total chaos. Um, I'm going to try and move the photo a bit to the left and move it down a bit. Like this should be fine. So now you can see the eyes are in one line. Otherwise, another thing you could do is maybe we'll try this one first. The eyes, the nose, and the mouth are in one line. So, what we're gonna do next is actually increasing the opacity again and creating an inverted layer mask by pressing this button over here and holding down Alt. So now the photo actually disappears. But what we're going to do now is drawing it back in by using the brush tool. It should be a rather soft one, so I think around 20, 25 should be fine. We can increase the size a bit. Let's set the opacity to a bit higher. And make sure you have a white color here in the foreground. And select your inverted layer mask and then just start to draw in the other photo. If you want to remove parts of the photo again, just select black as the foreground color and draw as usual. By doing this, you will remove some parts of the photo again. I'd say this already looks Okay, yes. So now let, let's go ahead and duplicate our initial photo again. Renaming it to blend 2. And actually repeating this step, decreasing the opacity and moving it. You can either move it up or you can also move it down, just like on the other side. You can repeat this step as often as you like. I think I'm going to try to move it over here, maybe a bit further down than the, initial, than the second blend. And then I'll change back the opacity to 100, move it to the top position of our layers. And then again, create an inverted layer mask and drawing it in again. Actually, like this, I already kind of like it. I think it looks nice. 
So what you can do next is actually playing a bit with the overall opacity of the layers you blended in. So maybe reduce this opacity a bit. Maybe also decrease this opacity a bit. Maybe blend in this fully here a bit more. But make sure that you don't have this eye over here. Because otherwise it's just like, you know, overloaded a bit. Okay, increase this opacity a bit and decrease this opacity a bit more. Again, you can like really play around here. I'm actually quite satisfied with this version again. If you think, oh no, it's still so empty on top, you can just go ahead, duplicate the layer, and repeat the step. So I actually like it the best like this with only um, three versions, but as I said, you can repeat this step as often as you want to. Um, you can later also go ahead and simply resize the photo a bit. Let's go ahead and add some more details to this photo. And to do so, we go to sources like Unsplash or Pexels and search for light leaks or light, te light textures. I like this one. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it into your project. And now we're gonna change the blend mode. And you can set it, for example, to green. Decrease the opacity a bit. And again, create an inverted layer mask. What we're gonna do now is draw in these details here and there. By adding them, it gives the photo a bit more of a faded out look and I think it really um, matches with the fake snow she has on her lips. <laughs> yes, I already like that one, but now let's duplicate no, actually, let's bring in the same layer again. Turn it around. Let's set it to multiply. Decrease the opacity. And let's create an inverted layer mask again and draw it in where we want to have some further details. I also like to bring in some kind of gradient to make the whole photo, the full whole edit look a bit more faded out. I created a gradient with a really faded out brownish color which I got from her face. Then try to fade it out a bit more. Okay, let's decrease the opacity here as well. And also this one, I think it's a bit too much. Yeah, let's keep it like that. I think that's fine. 
And then you can add some final adjustments by, for example, adding some levels or adjusting the levels. Let's add one more reflex pool here. With this adjustment layer, I tried to fade out the photo a bit more and also increasing the brightness. But yes, so this is the basic on how you can create such a fake prism effect, like here, here, or here. It just depends on how much time you have and how much you would like to play around. Um, one more thing you could do if you now say, okay, this eye looks way too dark. Just go ahead, select a bright color, like some kind of grayish, create a gradient, radial, decrease the size a bit and put it behind the eye. And decrease the opacity a bit. But now it's brightened up a bit. And I think I like it like that. I will keep it like that. You can add even more um, textures like light leaks. You can add more. Um, blended photos, depends on what you like, but this is like the basic version of how to create such a prism effect. Hope you guys liked this tutorial and if you liked it, thumbs up or subscribe and yeah, seeing you soon.